Hey guys, my name is Loveless and we are back with Quirk Knife. I kind of took a break from this one because I just wasn't in the mood for some reason. Um, but side note, I think uh, with all this practicing of doing all these episodes, I think my voice acting skills have gotten so much better. <sighs> or at least I think so, even if no one else agrees with me, so. Eh. Cause I was doing like a little video that was on TikTok. Well, I didn't actually post it or anything, but it was pretty much supposed to be like, hey, try these voice lines between a hero and a villain. And oh my God, my villain voice, uh, I was cringing while saying it. I was like, <laughs> so bad. Like it was good, but it just creeped me the hell out. So let's get straight into it. Oh yeah, also we're on chapter 26, of course. B, I made something for you. Dobby opened his eyes to see Izuku crouched over him, his face far closer than necessary. Get away. Your breath smells like shit, he grunted as he fully palmed the kid's face, knocking him away like he was some sort of puppy. Says you. We really need to go for a shower soon, Izuku mumbled while rubbing his nose dramatically. Dobby reached over to check the time on his phone. Hitoshi and Mei would be halfway through school by now. So would Shoto. Now that he thought about it. Hey, do you think that Lavender's gonna make any friends? Dobby couldn't help but ask, slowly working the blankets off his lap and pulling his last clean shirt on. Um, Izuku trailed. Well, I, uh, he's not very good at that. I had to bully him into it. Oh God, that poor kid probably couldn't handle another Izuku in his life. Izuku squawked and put his hands on his hips, Dobby noting what he was wearing for the first time. Hey, he bit down on his lip to keep himself from laughing. Why are you wearing one of Toga's skirts? The girl who was knocked out in a deep sleep was a bit farther down in the cushion, her hair matted and messy, stirred but didn't wake up. Well, she had extras, and all my bottoms smelled funky, Izuku laughed. Besides, it looks good, no? Dobby just pursed his lips because, hey, who was he to judge? So, you made something for me? He stated instead, speaking quietly enough to not wake Toga. What is it? So, I couldn't sleep again, and I already did some analysis for, like, five hours and then I noticed that May left some paint and junk and stuff so I made you a mask also one for Tova but I didn't want to wake her up yet Dobby scoffed oh so you let her sleep but you wake me up big green eyes stared at Dobby yep Azuku dug through a bag of items until he finally pulled out a mask nearly identical to his own except it was painted in black and vertical yellow stripes with a yellow filter. I don't know how to do everything May can, but I do know how air purification works. And yeah, you can't really use your quirk because that would make what we do illegal. Is it not already illegal? No. So it's legal. Shut up. Anyways, if something happens and you need to use your quirk, this will help keep the smoke from your lungs. Plus, since you are a smoker, supplying yourself oxygen can be harder. So this has a setting which will aid in pumping air into your lungs. Dobby couldn't lie. It was impressive on how fast this kid could adapt and learn with such little time he spent watching over May. Cool. Thanks, Izuku. But what's with the colors? Izuku's cheeks went pink slightly and folded his hands behind his back. Do you not like it? Why did this kid always look like one wrong word would tear him apart and end his existence? Probably because it would, if he was being honest. What? I never said that, you little shit. I was just curious. Izuku's brows furrowed. Oh, okay. Because you're B, and bees are black and yellow. Oh. And Dobby was B, Izuku's B. Well, thank you. I fucking appreciate it, or whatever. 
The boy beamed with utter pride and padded further into the warehouse, probably to do some stretches since last night's vigilante work was pretty intense. Mainly running away from Eraserhead and Star after Toga punched a guy in the face even though that he was already restrained. She's still learning. Dobby sat back down in his respective piles of blankets and ran his fingers over the texture of the mask, blindly scrolling through his phone. Just like he did several times a day. Dobby clicked onto a messaging app, knowing his read receipts were always off and clicking on a familiar group chat, one he was never removed from. He didn't get notifications from this chat very often, but he did enjoy scrolling up and reading conversations, sometimes the ones from years ago where he contributed with his own texts. Dobby scrolled up to his all-time favorite chat, the one where, of course, he had been entrusted with Shoto for the first time. Me. Oh no. Fumi. What's wrong? Me. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Nate. What? Me. So, you know how Fumi let me bring Shoto to the park? Fumi. Toya. Me. It went great. Nate. Good job then. Fumi. Toya. Nate. Oh. Me. Right. Went. Shoto doesn't have brown hair. Nate. No, his hair is red and white. Nate, I think. Fumi. Are you two kidding me? You two were ten and seven. Fumi. You've been... You've been entrusted with a phone at a young age. Fumi. And you were entrusted with your baby brother. Fumi. So, what's the problem? Me. Such a mom, Fumi. Fumi. Toya, me, I brought home the wrong baby. Nate, what? Me, I did not bring me, Shoto home. Me, it's some brunette. Fumi, this is a you problem. Dad is going to be home in 10 minutes, so you better book it back to the park and get the right kid right now. Nate, did the kid not say anything? Me. The kid's like two, so no. Fumi. Shoto is four. Me. I'm going now. Don't tell anyone. Dobby smiled fondly at the memory, recalling the way Fumi and Natsuo covered for him when he didn't make it back before his father. Even Shoto agreed not to tell anyone, and he kept that promise. Nostalgia and anxiety washed over him as he turned his phone off and tossed it aside. Toga now rolling over and yawning. I'm hungry, Dobby hummed. All right, get ready and get some laundry. We need showers too, so we'll do all that and it should be in time to meet at the cafe. Toga jumped up immediately, started shuffling her dirty clothes into one of Izuku's backpacks, the greenette doing the same as they began to chatter about God knows what. Dobby himself took a few more minutes to lay on his back and stared up at the beams in the ceiling of the warehouse, trying to not imagine what his family was up to right now, because that family was no longer his. Dobby watched Toga and Izuku laugh back and forth while drinking the smoothies he bought them after their showers and laundry. Well, the smoothies that Endeavor bought them, technically. You know, one time I climbed up a tree because I wanted to figure out why cats got stuck, Toga explained. Izuku adjusted his uh, medical mask and making sure his bangs were covering his eyes. And what was the conclusion? Toga smiled. Well, now I know how they get stuck. Dobby sighed and looked down at his phone, sorting through some junk mail when he suddenly ran right into Toga's back, nearly falling onto his ass. Her hands were planted on her hips and he could practically hear her growling. What are you looking at? With curiosity, 
Dobby followed her gaze straight across the street to a group of boys pointing at the three of them. Izuku, to be specific. Toga, just let it go, the small boy muttered quietly, very much out of character as he lightly tugged on her wrist and his face was beat red. No, I won't let it go, she shouted, turning back to the boys across the street. Huh? What's so funny? One of the boys crossed his arms. Is that a boy or a girl? Togo scowled even further if that was possible, and she whipped a knife out of nowhere. He's a boy. Why does it matter, huh? Looks more like an it to me. A boy with orange hair added on, Azuku still tugging on Toga with his chin tucking flat against his chest. Dobby was now very pissed off. Oi! he screamed, ripping his own mask off and rolling up his sleeves to show off his scars. Do you got a problem with him wearing a skirt? Huh? Is it fucking hurting you in some way? The cars honked as Dobby walked across the street without hesitation, the kids stuttering backwards. Am I not yelling loud enough, you motherfucking shit stains from hell? At that, the kids took off down the sidewalk as quickly as possible. Dobby huffed in satisfaction as he returned to the kids. Toga's grimace faded into the look of empathy. Izuku, are you... I told you guys to drop it, he shouted suddenly, the bridge of his nose scrunched up in frustration. But they were being mean, so what's new? That's how people like us are always treated. Toga paused and repeated the sentence like it was a foreign word on her tongue. People like us? Different, Azuku clarified, smoothing out the wrinkles in his blue skirt. People are scared of different people. It's how it goes. Don't you know that already? The blonde girl hummed like she was in deep thought. Well... If you guys are different, then I'm okay with being different too. Dobby watched as Izuku's eyes widened and surprised, honestly. He clearly wasn't expecting that response. Neither was he. Right, the boy mumbled. Um, let's go now. Toshi will be done with school soon. Dobby spoke sternly before he even realized what he was saying. Don't you ever think fucking lesser of yourself just because others make you think you should. Do you understand? Izuku's eyes was wide as Dobby gripped the sides of his cheek, smushing his face hard enough to cause all his scars and freckles to wrinkle. And I better not hear that fucking excuse of drop it ever again. You always stand up against assholes like that and put them in their place. You're not weak and you never were. Get that through your thick head of hair. Oh shit. Dobby went too far as he noticed the wobble in Izuku's bottom chap lip and the way his eyes were growing glossy. Uh, fuck. Ah, uh, shit. Izuku, I didn't mean... Thank you. It was quiet. Barely heard. Maybe even Toga missed it. But Dobby didn't. It was the softest he's ever heard the kid speak. So honest and earnest and kind and vulnerable. Dobby can imagine this is how Izuku used to be before life went to complete shit and tossed him onto the streets. The three walk in silence that wasn't exactly comfortable yet, nor was it comfortable. The atmosphere simply existed. As the warmth of their token coffee absorbed into their skin, Dobby inhaled the familiar scent of freshly baked goods and took in the sights of kittens and cats of all colors wandering happily. This was the place that gave the strange sense of home. The same strange sense that these stupid kids were able to give him somehow. None of it made sense. But in hindsight, life wasn't built to make sense, no matter how perfect one's life is. As Dobby let Izuku and Toga pick out their favorite snacks, he grabbed a coffee for himself and Hitoshi, punching in Endeavor's pin for the fourth time that day. Hey! Izuku tugged lightly on the back of his coat in a childlike manner. If you have a debit card, why don't you buy a home? Dobby decided to be honest. I thought about it, but he would probably notice. Rent is a big chunk of money. 
you might spot that, you know. Green eyebrows pinched together in confusion for a moment until it dawned on him. A slow smile spread on his face. That's awesome. Dobby suppressed a smirk under the expression of pure awe and knocked him away. Go pet the cats and shit. With one last smile, Izuku ran over and set down his cinnamon muffin on his favorite table, immediately dropping to the ground as Toga did the same, accepting their fate of being covered in multicolored cat hair. It was strange being the only one who truly got to see the difference between chaos and morphine compared to Izuku and Toga. Don't ask about morphine. It was Izuku's play on words for Toga's quirk since she could morph into other people. Also, something about her being a little off her rocker. Izuku tried naming Dobby Bumblebee, but that was swiftly decided on Blaze because apparently it was more badass. The whole naming thing had Dobby questioning a lot of things. Some things he felt like he needed to talk about, but wasn't sure how to bring it up. He sat down at the corner of the table and brought his knees to his chest, sipping lightly on his coffee while he watched the two troublemakers check for an attempt of cat smuggling. They tried every time. May actually managed to do it once, but both Dobby and Hitoshi made her shamefully return the very confused kitten. You look upset, Izuku mumbled, climbing into a seat with the kitten perched on his shoulder. Is it because of earlier? I didn't mean to make you angry. You didn't make me angry, Dobby corrected. And even if you did, I would get over it because I'm not a pussy. Izuku snorted. Don't change the subject, B. The shop was nearly empty considering it was school hours. Even if they were to come to an end, Toga looked up curiously from the ground, watching the pensive expression Dobby was aware he was wearing. I don't think you know. He looked down to Toga. But, uh, my name isn't actually Dobby. She nodded. Yeah, duh. Who would name their child Dobby? It's a weird name. The man blinked slowly. Right. My given name is, uh, Toya. But, and I've been thinking and shit about it. Do you think... Maybe when it's just us, maybe use my name a little. I don't know. I guess I'm trying to see how I feel about it. Azuku drew a slow breath through his nose as his eyebrows furrowed in some thinking of his own. Dobby curious about what those thoughts could be. What caused you to change your mind? Azuku tilted his head in an innocent way, resting his chin on his knees. Dobby honestly didn't know himself, so answering that question was difficult. Some normality, I think, keeps me sane from, yeah. Azuku nodded. Okay, whatever makes you comfortable. Something about the way Azuku was speaking was putting Dobby on edge for some reason. Like the calm before a storm. It was making him anxious. Right. Fucking thanks. The two hummed as the doorbell rang and Hitoshi stepped in, a soft smile on his face as he saw his friends, still wearing his capture scarf. That thing has been glued to his neck. Hey, he beamed dressed in the UA uniform. Sorry I'm late. I walked to the train station with some, well, friends. Toka and Izuku looked up with bright eyes speaking at once. Tell us! Azuku listened excitedly as Hitoshi recounted his day, explaining the different students he encountered and their quirks, allowing Izuku to use his analytical skills. A bird head. I can't make that shit up. I haven't seen much of his quirk. Um, Toko something is his name. He's really quiet, but, but he had like this shadow. I don't know how to explain it, but... Hopefully I'll be able to see more of his quirk properly tomorrow. Azuku nodded. Wow, these are so many new quirks to analyze and I can give them to Shota to help his students. Don't worry, 
I'll include one of you too. So that way he can't pin the information transferred to you. Hitoshi snorted. That'll get him riled up. But what if he starts to think you're one of the students there? Toshi, I'm dead, remember? Besides, if I was a student there, he would have found me by now. You know, fucking green mullet and all. While the purple-haired boy laughed at first, something shined in his eyes and laughter faded, contorting into something like anger. There's another student, Izuku. Thought I was crazy at first, but it was definitely him, Kachan. Izuku's stomach dropped. He couldn't help it. That name made him want to run. Run until the burning in his lungs was unbearable, and until his legs shook and trembled. I... Hitoshi swallowed audibly, looking down at his hands. I got just angry. So, so angry. My scarf to move on its own, that never happened before. Zuku wanted to ask questions about his scarf being emotionally activated, But his throat was so closed in on itself, and the corners of his vision were starting to fade to white. Did he recognize you? Hitoshi shook his head. I don't think so. But I don't know if I can be in the same class as him. It wasn't even me affected by him. But just the sound of his breathing made me want to... I wanted to... hurt him? Izuku whispered with wide eyes. Toga and Dobby examined him carefully. Yes. Izuku didn't know how to respond. Should he be flattered that Hitoshi felt angry on his behalf? What would he do if he ever saw Kachan again? He wouldn't cry. Not this time. Not ever again. Izu? Toga reached out and poked the toe of his sneakers, causing him to jolt ever so slightly. You can't do anything, the boy whispered. You just have to ignore him. Make friends with other people. That's... that's all. The table was silent as Izuku stirred in his thoughts, too many things crossing his mind at once. Everything was going so fast. How come Hitoshi got to go to UA and Izuku couldn't? Would Hitoshi leave now that he has better friends? Heroic friends? How could someone like Kachan be allowed to become a hero? Does Kacha know he's legally dead? His mind completely switched topics. What would his father think if he saw him in his outfit right now? He always said anything feminine made for a bastard of a son. But that's what he always been, right? Didn't Kacha say that everything that happens is what he deserved, right? This is all Izuku's fault. If only he did what he was told. Maybe he wouldn't be in this position. If he had a quirk, maybe... No, not maybe. If he had a quirk, none of this will be his problem. Why was his mind being so loud? Or were those real voices? I'm tired. He blurted out suddenly, not noticing he interrupted a quiet conversation. Dobby frowned. You're always tired. Izuku ignored him, instead shaking his head like a child and digging his fingers into his knees. No, 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 I want to leave. Hey, the man spoke firmly again. Hitoshi just got here. At least let him finish his coffee. Izuku slammed his hands on the table, causing the cats around them to scatter and Hitoshi's coffee sloshed onto the table, leaving his friends surprised from the outburst. What's your problem? Dobby hissed. Why are you so upset? Is it talking about this Kachan shit? He's the name you shout in your sleep, you know. When you do sleep, that is. Izuku knocked his knuckles together as he tried to get the words off his tongue, but nothing was coming out. It's fine, Hitoshi shrugged. I should probably cut back on coffee anyway. Why don't we walk down to the beach? Izuku shook his head. I'm gonna... Um, home. I'm going to the warehouse, by myself. I'm tired. Dabby stood up trying to stop him, but Izuku slunk out of the cafe 
and walked back to the warehouse, his mind running laps, pissing him off to no end. He didn't want to think. He wanted everything to be quiet for once. Azuku passed over a bridge, and that only caused the dangerous thoughts to run faster. His footsteps stuttering as he forced his eyes to stay on the ground. Dangerous thoughts never ended well, so he kept walking forward. Izuku arrived at his destination and locking the door behind him, piling up every blanket he could locate and bury himself alive in them, as if it was some sort of nest for a wounded animal, where the world could no longer hurt him, even as for a short while. Shota sat in the teacher's lounge with his legs crossed in his chair, staring down at the files of his class this year. Izuku spoke about his friend attending UA, and although they may not be in the hero course, it was worth a shot. He stared down at the picture of Mina Ashiro, and thinned his eyes slowly, slowly sliding it to lay on Hanata Sero's file. Shota leaned over, plucking up Ochako Yuraraku's information, placing it in a pile with Tena Ida and Tsuyu Asui. He groaned in frustration as he removes Kyoka Jiro from the previous pile and placed it over with Moma Yagrosu's, sliding Minora Mineta's file straight across the desk, causing it to fall off the edge. Show? Hazashi's voice shook slightly. Why is your face like that? Like what? He snapped back, not daring to remove his eyes from Shoto Todoroki's image. Like you're trying to crack the secret of the universe. Shoto waved a hand dismissively, frustrated as he had to create a new pile for Todoroki, and plucked up the next, his brows furrowed in concentration. Hitoshi Shinso. The purple hair brought back a specific memory, one that wasn't exactly pleasant, where he was flipped off by a boy in a cat mask and a small tuft of purple hair sticking up. Hazashi watched over his shoulder as Shota looked through the very small file of Hitoshi Shinso, wanting an idea of who he was. There was nearly no information provided. He was given up for adoption at the age of four without any background information on his family, except for his birthday, quirk, and his name. No one bothered to locate the family. His quirk was brainwashing, but Shota already figured that out himself. He was currently housing with Yuri Kaibu, a single woman, aged 83, diagnosed with depression, general anxiety, and insomnia, medicated for all three. Ah, a little too familiar to him for Shota's liking. Graduating middle school from an online program with high marks and had no reference letter, no participation in extracurriculars or clubs. Had a certification from JSL class. That was intriguing. Hitoshi Shinso. Hazashi hummed. He's quiet. Didn't really say much during introductions in English. Shota leaned back in his chair to look up, making eye contact. What'd he say? His name. That's it. The black-haired man snorted and looked back down, staring at the piles for a few moments until he recalled his student's reaction, letting the file fall into the pile with Sero and Ashido, moving on to the next with information now noted in his mind. Hitoshi Shinso was going to be a problem child. He can feel it. Yay! I always do a little celebration after every episode. Yay! A little chapter. Yay! We did it! We did it! Or I did it! <laughs> uh, this actually wasn't too bad. It's kind of like meh, but it's starting to like develop and stuff like that. So I can't really fault it. And not every single chapter is going to be like action-packed and, you know... Like, you gotta build from somewhere, so. But I still like it. It was an enjoying read once I actually got into the mood to read it. Um, but, yeah, I'll be working on the next one as soon as I have the mental capacity to do so. Which, I have quite a bit right now, but, you know, only time will tell. Okay, so, if you want to see more of this, you know what to do.